Dear students, uh, today we will cover some articles of dielectrics and ferroelectrics uh, such as local electric field at an atom, Lorentz field, fields of dipoles inside the cavity. First, local electric field at an atom. When an external field is applied to a specimen, then the specimen is polarized. The sum of an external field electric field E0 and a field due to other dipoles within the specimen is called local field at an atom. This local field is quite different from microscopic electric field. Uh, the microscopic electric field we have an idea about the microscopic electric field is equal to E0 plus E1. Here E0 is external electric field E is the microscopic electric field while E1 is the depolarization field. We know that E1 is equal to minus 4 by 4 pi by 3p using this value e is equal to e naught minus 4 pi by 3p in cgs system and uh, while in ss system e is equal to e naught minus 1 by 3 epsilon naught p now consider the field that act on the, the atom at the center of the sphere if the dipoles are parallel to the z axis and have magnitude p then the z component of the field at the center due to all other dipoles is uh, e dipole is equal to uh, p cum sigma 3 zi square minus ri square by ri5. Uh, this relation actually comes from the uh, uh, relation of electric field due to all other dipoles. E of r is equal to sigma i 3 pi dot ri into ri minus ri square pi divided by ri5. Here actually dark product of polarization taken with the z component while the reference point remains ri uh, by using the ri uh, scale uh, value in this uh, equation we get the e dipoles is equal to p sigma 3 z i square minus x i square minus y i square minus z i square by ri5 by simplification we get the value in cg system by dividing 4 pi epsilon naught uh, we get the value of e dipoles uh, in si system the x, y, z directions are equivalent because of the symmetry of the lattice sphere. So, uh, the three components uh, of uh, electric field x, y, z will cancel each other. Thus, the local field at an atom is the sum of electric field E0 from external source and of the field from the dipole within the specimen. We can write it as E local is equal to E0 plus E1 plus E2 plus E3. Here, E0 is the electric field produced by the fixed charges external to the body. E1 is the electric field due to polarization from surface charge density. Uh, we have surface charge density and dot P on the outer surface of the specimen. While E2 is the electric field due to Lorentz cavity that is field associated with the surface of the spherical cavity. And E3 is the electric field due to atoms inside the cavity. The contributions of E1 plus E2 plus E3 to the local field is the total field at one atom caused by the dipole moments of all other atoms in the specimen. Therefore, E1 plus E2 plus E3 is equal to sigma i 3 pi dot ri into ri minus ri square pi whole divided by ri5 in CGS system. We can justify all these electric fields in this diagram. Uh, we have taken a diagram in the form as uh, material in the form of ellipsoidal uh, and we uh, applied external field E0 from right to left. Uh, due to this field, a uh, sur fictitious surface, char uh, surface charge density will appear on the uh, specimen uh, and uh, e the electric field due to this fictitious sur surface charge density even will appear which is opposite to the uh, E0 that is depolar depolarization field E1 and if we take some uh, fictitious spherical cavity inside the specimen then the fictitious surface charge density again will appear on this spherical cavity which is uh, this surf, uh, surface charge density uh, will appear opposite to the outer boundary uh, and uh, that uh, uh, fictitious surface charge density of this spherical cavity will again produce another electric field that is E2 uh, that is known as Lorentz field uh, and uh, the E3 field uh, 
uh, from the dipoles inside the sphere at any point inside this spherical cavity uh, let's say at any point a and uh, sometimes this will be zero due to symmetry of the specimen you can uh, read this uh, in figure caption Lorentz field e2 we have a specimen in the form of el ellipsoidal and uh, we applied external field e0 from right to left and a uh, fictitious surface charge density appear here uh, negative surface charge density appear on the right side while the positive surface charge density appear on the left side and uh, this fictitious surface charge density uh, generate an electric field opposite to the e0 uh, from left to right e1 that is depolarization field and if we take a spherical cavity inside the specimen then uh, the uh, this spherical cavity uh, carry some fictitious surface charge density which is opposite to opposite to the external boundary of the specimen uh, and the surface charge density on this spherical cavity is uh, positive on the right side while the negative on the left side and again a uh, field is produced due to this fictitious surface charge density of the spherical cavity from uh, right to left that is e2 and known as the uh, Lorentz field and uh, e3 is the field at any point a inside this spherical cavity and due to the all uh, dipoles are uh, due to uh, due to the uh, all dipoles inside the cavity now uh, the spherical cavity of the previous diagram we uh, taken here independently by rotating the 90 angle now the polarization is uh, uh, upward in the upward direction and e naught is also on upward direction uh, now the uh, if we take some reference point uh, uh, in this spherical cavity uh, then the uh, theta here uh, the uh, from re the reference point and the the maximum component of the surface charge density is along the polarization p and the uh, the that is uh, if the radius of the spherical cavity is a then the the component along the uh, the polarization p along upward direction is p cos a cos theta while the front component of the theta is a sin theta and if it if, it, if the angle changes from theta to theta plus d theta then the segment covered uh, is uh, a d theta uh, by the rules of the arc a q is equal to um, the the radius and the, um, the and the angle d theta so then uh, the field es due to polarization induced surface charges on the surface of the fictitious spherical cavity around the point a was investigated by the lorentz the apparent surface charge density on the part of the spherical surface uh, between theta and theta plus d theta is uh, is equal to sigma theta is equal to minus p cos theta here uh, uh, we have uh, uh, rotated the spherical cavity from the original diagram uh, now here the positive surface charge density will appear on, on the bottom of the spherical cavity and the uh, on the upper side the negative surface charge density and the electric field is uh, along the e naught uh, from lower to upward direction uh, therefore the sigma theta uh, maximum value uh, on the upward direction is minus p cos theta here x axis is the along the direction of the field uh, the contribution the the contribution of all the surface charges between theta and theta plus d theta to the y and z components of the local electric field e local cancel each other the only x component uh, will affect here the contribution of surface charge density charge density sigma theta to x component of field is uh, due to the surface uh, area man, uh, minus sigma theta cos theta divided by a square and uh, using the value of uh, uh, sigma theta from equation 1 into equation 2 uh, we get uh, p cos square theta by a square equation number 3 the total surface charge density theta and theta plus d theta is equal to the surface charge, charge density sigma theta 
and the total circumference 2 pi and the arc uh, in front of theta a sin theta and the segment a d theta and uh, the total electric field uh, then the value will be equal to p cos square theta 2 pi a square sin theta d theta divided by a square and the electric field due to the fictitious spherical cavity of radius a at the center e s r e2 is equal to uh, integral 0 to pi p cos square theta 2 pi sin theta d theta uh, if uh, this uh, uh, this is the electric field uh, can be derived from the coulomb's law and if you divide by 4 pi epsilon naught then the value will be in si system otherwise uh, uh, it will be in cgs system now we simplify this uh, electric field in cgs system and we take in the integration and uh, here uh, uh, cos pi and cos 0 uh, having having power of odd gets the value minus 1 and the final value is e2 is equal to minus 4 pi p by 3 in cj system if we divide by 4 pi epsilon naught then the value will be in si system e2 is equal to 1 by 3 epsilon naught p in si system this is negative of the depolarization even in a polarized sphere so that e1 plus e2 is equal to 0 for a sphere field of dipoles inside the cavity E3. The field E3 due to dipoles within the spherical cavity is the only term that depends upon the crystal structure. We know that for reference site with cubic surroundings in a sphere is E dipole is equal to 0. That is E3 is equal to 0. If all the atoms may be replaced by a point dipoles parallel to each other, uh, as we know that E local is equal to E0 plus E1 plus E2 plus E3 and we have the value of microscopic electric field E is equal to E0 plus E1 using this in equation 1 we get E local is equal to E plus E2 plus E3 and uh, using the value of E2 is equal to 4 pi by 3 P uh, we get E local is equal to E plus 4 pi by 3 P plus E3 as E3 is 0 for a isotropic material uh, so that e local is equal to e plus 4 pi by 3 uh, p which is known as the Lorentz relation the field acting at an atom in a cubic site is the macroscopic field e plus 4 pi by 3 p from the polarization of other atoms in the specimen thanks